Disclaimer. This video's information is being provided for informational, educational, and general interest purposes only. The information in this video is not intended to shock, enrage, or otherwise provoke the viewer. The sole purpose of this video was to raise awareness of true crime-related events. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. She raped my son. I intentionally killed her. How did you do that? Um, starting from the beginning, when I found out about what Stoney was doing, to it was nine months later after finding out about Stephen. So for the whole nine months, we were in the house. She was still raping my child. I did not know that. When I first found out, after she told me, um, I took a minute because I was not understanding, you know what was that she did that to him, but um, I repeatedly punched her. On many occasions, my son, I told him to tell me every single thing she did to him. So as she was telling me, he was telling me more and more things that she did, I assaulted her every time he told me what she did to him. Um, by assault, I mean I punched her. I have put a bag over her head till she lost consciousness. Um, I threw hot water on her, scalding hot water from the faucet. Um, Did you hit her in the head with a wooden yes, stick? Yes, I hit her in her head multiple times, over and over. Was that shortly before she died? That was actually days before she died and the day she died. Okay. Um, I hit her on her back, it's like with her tailbone. Um, I kicked her. Perhaps you don't know, but did this happen on or about May 25th, 2014? May, May 25th is actually the day she died, or well, the day I killed her. And you said you killed her by putting a grocery bag over her head? Yes, um, that day would tell me different things because she was doing this to him for years, and I did not know that. You get what I'm saying? And I didn't find out until nine months later. She had started with Steven. She ruined my son, okay? She started with Steven before he even started. So, yes, I put a bag over her head, but um, it got worse that day. Yes, I did. It got worse that day because she would tell me how she would take her pad, her menstrual pad, and squeeze her blood out in his mouth, okay? And it was just, it was over with after that. It was over with. You meant to kill her? I definitely meant to kill her. Okay. It wasn't an accident? No, not at all. Okay. If I had a chance to do it again, I would. When you went and got the grocery bag and suffocated her, that was your intent? Yes. Okay. Um, she was standing in the bathtub. I was throwing hot water on her. My son was standing to my right outside the bathroom door. And he was telling me, everything he was telling me, I looked at her and I'm like, you did this? And she was like, yes, so I actually had a stick and I was hitting her in the head. Every time he told me something, I hit her very hard in her head and I was throwing hot water on her. And when I actually took her out of the bathroom, I took her back in her room and I just kept staring at her and I said, excuse my language, <laughs> to him, just like, you know, I'm constantly asking her. She kept saying, I hate him. And I'm like, you hate him? You know? And she admitted to me that she hated, she hated Steven, she hated everybody. And I'm asking her why. She says, everybody always think so cute. And I'm like, so you brother, because you get what I'm saying? So it's, I meant to, I definitely meant to. And I do not feel any remorse for what I did to Stoney. 
because she had no remorse for what she did to my son. And it's not only raped him, she gang raped him with Steven. We're all sitting on the floor and he was telling me, this is how I found out about both of them doing it together. But it was too late. Steven was gone. But told me that Stoney would actually make him sit there. Why? In his words, him and Stoney, her and Stoney did the nasty stuff and then they did it to him. And so I'm, this was that's your way of inflicting punishment? Definitely. Okay. Okay. Where did that happen? What? Where did it The die? death. Her Where actual death? Yes. Um, I, I Not the location of the house. Where did you live at the time? Oh, Was that in the city of Detroit? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, go ahead. Can we ask um, Ms. Blair if she ever actually saw or witnessed any of these acts with regard to Stoney or Stephen? Okay. Yeah. Did, did you ever actually see anything? of any sexual abuse of any kind between either Stephen and Stoney and I reject her question, but I will answer it because no one will say that this did not happen because it actually did. I just want to have a clear record. Because so far, all you've told me was that you just heard it. Did you ever And that they admitted it? it. No, I did okay. not. You okay. get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I understand. But as I went back in my head and thought back to all the many things that was wrong with over the years and I'm like that's what was wrong with you he'll use the bathroom and say mom my butt hurts when I poop I, I don't know so I started giving him 100% juice to make his stool softer maybe to help him use but it, that wasn't the problem it wasn't his stool it was that he was being raped okay my son looked me in my eyes and he gave me a very detailed account of everything they did was not a violent boy he is a very sweet little boy so for him to stand there and look at me and say do it again he was hurting you know? Okay. At a certain point, I told him to stop talking. And I said, Stoney, you tell me what did to my son. And I said, if she's saying anything that's not right, tell me. She started telling me many things, many things. And I also asked her, so why didn't Stephen tell me that when I asked him, did anybody do this to him? Why didn't he tell me that you did it to him? Because Stoney was going upstairs, beating Stephen's ass, threatening him, basically, at a certain point, after I was hitting Steven, I didn't want to look at him. I didn't want to. I didn't want to look at him. So I told him to go to his room. When it came time to eat, I didn't want to take no food up. So I sent Stony up because she volunteered, not knowing at that time that Stony was raping either of them. But every time she went upstairs, I wouldn't have known if she hit him or not because I had put many bruises on him. So every time she went upstairs, she admitted to me that she was hitting him also, knocking the hell out of him, telling him, "You better not tell her nothing." Okay. You get what I'm saying? I understand. When she admitted these things to you, were you always being physical with her? The first time, no. We were sitting there. Okay. She denied it, denied it, denied it constantly. And I'm like, Stoney, you better tell me to <laughs> sitting here. He don't know nothing about it. He constantly, t you get what I'm saying? Who would admit that? Who would admit that if they did not do it? All right, tell me what happened to Stephen. Um, basically the same thing. For, can I ask you a question first? The people standing behind me, this woman who just asked the question, is she trying to make it seem like this did not happen? No, no, no. We're, we just have to have a clear record. Okay. But this is moment. your time to talk. Go ahead. I mean, right now, ma'am, this is just you choosing to plea guilty. The people do not have any sort of plea agreement. Yeah, because, you know, you it's all. like I'm willing to take a, a polygraph test. It's like because I understand people don't want to hear me, period, but I'm willing to I'm take here. it on everything. I'm to you. Tell me what happened to Stephen. Um, I came home one day. My daughter, my oldest, met me at the door, and she's like, Mom, come see what he's doing with his dials. And I'm like, what is he doing? He was making one dial, his little wrestle man, hump on top of the other. No, I'm like, why was you doing that? I said, anybody ever do this to you? He said, no. I said, then why are you doing that? And he said, yes, Stephen did. And I was like, so this is the first I'm hearing about that period. This was nine months before Stoney. Mm -hmm. 
okay? Stoney wasn't downstairs, and I she was always in the background. I wish to God I had questioned everybody together, but I didn't. Would but, you say this was around August 30th, 2012? No, this was before August 30th. August 30th is when he died. Okay. This was when, maybe a week, a week and a half. Before he died? Yes. Okay. So that, telling you that set off some action? Yes, I went upstairs because Stephen was upstairs in him, his and room. And I went upstairs and I said, Stephen, you said you was humping on him. And then Stephen stood up and he looked at me and right then I could tell I could tell something was wrong in his face because he was just like this. Any normal kid, I know my kid would have been like, what? That's not what he did. He stood up and looked at me like he had lost his mind, okay? And it, it just hearing that from him had me up in my head, period. But I asked him, I said, Stephen, tell me the truth. Was you humping on He said, yes, but that was all. And I said, did you hump on him with your underwear off? He said, no yelled out yes he did and I just remember going in the hallway walking back and forth like and I walked back up and I was like you your brother you, you get what I'm you your brother so I'm looking at them too I'm looking at them like what I can't understand so I start punching Steven you know I'm, I'm like what the f is you doing to him I just I just start asking him questions at this point it's just spilling out He's just spilling out, and mom, and he's doing like this, and he do this thing almost every night. He tell me how he was, uh, he's not put bags over Steven's head, because it, I thought he in the bed. My son was never a bad water. Didn't know it was Steven waking up every morning, pissing on like he was a damn piece of okay? They had bunk beds. Steven would get out the bed in the middle of the night. You would rape him in his own bed. You would pee on him instead of going to the bathroom. I'm waking up every morning thinking he's a bedwetter. So we just wash him up and go, on. You, you, you a bedwetter. Let's so talk about what you did to Steven. The reason I put bags over Steven's head because my son told me that the plastic on his bed, because I thought he was a bedwetter, he said, sometimes, Mom, I couldn't breathe. Stephen was laying on me, and he had my face down in the plastic on the bed. I couldn't breathe, and he was humping on my butt like a basketball. That's when I got a garbage bag and started putting it over Stephen's head, and I started asking him, bitch, you know what I'm saying? You see what this feel like? You can't breathe? You stop at my... That's my son. You could not breathe on top of getting raped. You was six years old at the time. You get what I'm saying? So I put a bag over his head. He lost consciousness. I did that a couple times. Um, he told me that would be face down. He had stuff around his neck. So I grabbed Steven and I grabbed the belt and I put a belt around his neck and I lifted him up. Like, do you like how this feels? Being choked with a belt. So I dropped him. I held him up until he lost consciousness as well. You were intending to. No, I did not intend to kill Steven. No, but no, no. I'm not. Listen to my question. You were intending to inflict serious, serious physical harm, but not kill him. Definitely. Okay. Did you also punch him? Yes, I did. Multiple did you also times. Him? Yes, I did. Okay. You talked about choking him. Did you also burn him? Yes, I did. Okay. How did you do that? Hot water, scalding hot water. In our bathroom, the hot, the hot water gets extremely hot. So, um, his private area, I stood him in the bathtub naked. You, you, you my son with yo you know so yes I threw hot water in his genital area multiple times multiple times every time Stephen peed in my son's eyes he put his in his ears his nose he peed he even told me one time mom and in my eyes it was it was he said it was it was gooey but it wasn't pee. And the right then, it was like, I didn't even know a nine-year-old could ejaculate. You get what I'm saying? So not only did you do that, you it in my son's eyes. So my son had to go through all this shit. So yes, yes, I threw hot water on him repeatedly. Did that make him burn? Yes, it did. His skin came off. Did you His also skin make came him off. drink Windex? Yes, I did because he told me in the middle of the night, he had took him in the basement and he made him drink the blue stuff from under the sink. And I'm like, what? What blue stuff? So I walked downstairs. He showed me what I said. You made me drink Windex. And then I went back to like years before. And I'm like, is this what was wrong with him? I thought you had the stomach flu. Where you vomit and have diarrhea. 
You get what at the same time? This is at that time this is what was going around. A lot of people had it, so this is what I thought <laughs> had. He didn't. Stephen made him drink Windex. So yes, I made that boy drink Windex. Okay. I'm just trying to clarify the record. Okay, again, you knew you were seriously harming him, but you didn't intend to murder him. No. Okay. But your actions ultimately caused his death. Yes, they did. Okay. Were you Stephen's mother? Yes. He was in your custody? I don't claim him as my son now, and I do not claim Stoney as my daughter. I have two children. That's it. Stephen and Stoney are demons, period. Listen to my question. At the time he died, he was in your custody or care? Yes. Okay. How old was he? Stephen was nine. And again, did this happen at your house in the city of Detroit? Yes. What you did to Stephen was punishment for what you did to Is that right? For what he did to Sorry, yes. for what Stephen did to yes. that was punishment. All right. And if I had killed Stephen intentionally, I definitely would be proud to say I did, but I didn't. But I know all the things that I did to him, how I hurt him, I know it did cause his death. You know what I'm saying? It was like that day, the day that he died, I went in his room. It was throw up in front of him on the bed. I got him up. He said he had to go to the bathroom, but he couldn't use the bathroom. By the time we came out the bathroom, his breathing was... It was crazy. Steven usually has a strong heartbeat, but it was really faint, really, really faint. And then all of a sudden, he just started going like this, and I was holding him. We were both sitting on the floor, and I'm actually holding him up. He couldn't even hold himself. I'm like Steven, doing like this, because the day before that, I actually said, I'm going to stop, because I looked in the room, and like, he is toe up, you know? Were you starving him at this time as well? No, I was not. I never starved him, and that's another thing that they're not understanding. He may have lost weight, but because they also... They had their hands and and they controlled him in every type of way, down to food. They would steal, they would take his meat, basically. We didn't always eat together. I thought him and Stephen was very close, so Stephen would manipulate me. Mom, can we have up in our room? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. I'm thinking that's his, his, that's his best friend, that's his brother. That's how he made his thing, but that's a lie. He kept up under his, up under his wing on purpose. He never wanted to be around Stephen, and I don't know how I didn't see that. So they would take his food and would actually only let him eat his vegetables. So yes, when I fed Stephen, he only got vegetables and like healthy things and it was minimal, like oatmeal and things like that. He did not get meat. You stole from my son and actually when I tried to feed him, my son said, Mom, that's bull. They used to take my food all the time. That's bull. You get what I'm saying? So yes. Now Stoney, I did starve her. I did. Nine more months, you going, and your big ass, she was 13. My son told me how she used to sit on his face, and she said, he said, Mom, it stinks real bad. And she was, you know what I'm saying? F yes, I did. I did. And then oatmeal is all that girl got. And she's lucky she got that once a day. Stoney only got oatmeal? Is that what you're oatmeal saying? once a day. She's okay. very lucky she got that. I and I even have to hide the fact that I was giving her oatmeal for because he didn't want me to feed her, and he had every right to feel that way. Hold on, just where can we get... Can you, can you no, I'm, I'm good. You're okay? Okay. I just have a few more questions. When you were physically harming Stephen, was it ever your intent to also cause any sort of serious mental harm? Just, well, I don't understand what you mean. When you were hurting him physically, was it also your intent to cause any sort of serious mental harm? What do you mean, mentally damage him? Yes. Like beating him in the head? No, like making it so that his, his thoughts aren't right. No, never. That make sense? Okay. Physical that punishment on what you did to my child because I had always told my kids the worst thing you can ever do to somebody is break them. I always told my son that and I always told the girls the worst thing you could do is cry rape on somebody if they didn't rape. They fully knew what they were doing. So you were only intending physical punishment? Yes. All right, now, just so that I'm clear, you weren't allowing them to treat your other children like this, were you? What do you mean? You weren't allowing them to sexually assault. I wasn't okay. allowing right, that. The, the, I, did, I never knew. That's exactly, you get what I'm saying? That's exactly what I wanted to know. You didn't know until afterwards. It's like. Am I right? Yes. Okay. It's this one instance I was asleep. Why you didn't tell me? He said, Mom, I even ran in the hallway and I had your hand. I was asleep. My son ran out and grabbed my hand. He was six and he was doing like this, trying to wake me up. Stephen was grabbing him back by the back of his shirt, pulling me, and I said, 
Why didn't you just scream out? He said, I don't know. You get what I'm saying? He even had my hand pulling on me, trying to wake me up. And since I'm a hard sleeper, I didn't wake up. So to hear my son say that to me is real up that that should happen right up under my nose. So, man, I don't regret none of this. I don't regret any of it. Is my son. That's my baby. There's no way that his brother and sister should know what he feels like on the inside. There's no way. Understood. I don't feel no remorse for the death of them demons. Okay. All right. I'm going to accept the plea unless either counsel's dissatisfied. Oh, medical examiner's report. Go ahead. Your Honor, the medical examiner report for Stephen Gage Berry is Joint People and Defense Exhibit okay. Number One. It's dated March. 20th. It's dated March 27, 2015. The medical examiner's report for Stoney and Leo is Joint People and Defendant Exhibit Number Two, all dated March 27, 2015. Okay, um, they're accepted and they're admitted. Yeah, Your Honor, um, I'm wondering if Ms. Blair ever called the police to report this. Can you answer that question? Why is she asking? We're just trying to make a clear record. You mean to report what they had done? No. What they had done to no. But after I found out about Steven, even before I started hitting him, I did actually call the police on advice and I told them like a hypothetical situation like if, because I was scared, like you get what I'm saying? What's going to happen with my other two? I definitely want to lose and I definitely, I was definitely about to leave after that just happened, but I called the police and I'm asking, asking them in a case where it's one brother that's been raping the other, what can be done? Will they take both kids out of the home? And he said, well, actually, yes, they will take both kids out of the home, but this is a case for a CPS. And they said, is that, did that happen to you? And I said, no, it's actually a friend. And he said, the best thing I can do is tell you to call CPS and they can guide you further on what to do. And they said, but basically it has to be an investigation, so both will be taken out of the home. You get what I'm saying? I so, understand. And how they manipulate, I was their mother. I was their mother. So if they can manipulate me, I, no. Okay. No. You? And I was not letting Stoney go anywhere. I'm glad. I actually was going to turn myself in right after Steven died. And I told my son that, you know, I, I, I I gotta go, and I gotta go turn myself into the police. I gotta go turn myself in. And he said, turn yourself into what? And I said, turn myself into the police. That mean I gotta go, because I killed somebody. And then he said, I don't want you to go. When he said that, that was it. So I put Steven in the freezer, and I said, I'm gonna stay with my kids as long as possible. And I'm glad I did, because if I had not have done that, I would not have found out about Stoney. You see what I'm saying? So everything happened how it was meant to happen. She could have been right with them, fooling everybody. And my son in would have been totally ruined. Your Honor, I have in my in my hand the postmortem report for Stoney Ann Blair and for Stephen Gage Berry. And uh, the prosecutor and I uh, are using this as bo both joint exhibits of Exhibit 1 and Exhibit 2 and we tender them to the court. Okay. I'll accept them. To help you make a determination on a factual basis. examiner's reports have been accepted as one and two, and they are consistent with the testimony that was just provided by Ms. Blair. I believe there's a sufficient factual basis to accept the plea at this point. Counsel, are either counsel aware of any promises, threats, or inducements that were not disclosed on this record? The people are not. Defense is not, Your Honor. Are 
Council satisfied that the court has complied with the court rules? Defenses. Okay. I'll accept the plea. We have. I'll accept the plea as knowing, accurate, and voluntary. And we have a sentencing date in this case. It would be two weeks from today, which takes us to July 13th. Is that good for you, Mr. Harris? I have a question about that. I'm still in the middle of a family trial, and um, I go tomorrow, it's supposed to be for closing, and the 27th uh, for best interest. So will that interfere with that? No. The 13th is, uh, is fine. Go ahead, check it at work for us. Is it possible to do it? I'm here on a Friday, the 17th. Is that good for you, Mr. That'll be fine, Your Honor. Okay. Friday, July 17th. You can step back, Ms. Blair. Come and get A Detroit police investigator's report and a petition filed in Wayne County Juvenile Court provide a harrowing glimpse into Blair's for children's ordeal inside apartment number 804, a lower at townhouse in the Martin Luther King apartment complex on the city's near east side. Blair's alleged beatings of her children with hot irons, wood planks, and extension cords are detailed in the documents. Nine months after allegedly scalding and killing her son, she allegedly starved her daughter before strangling her to death. The picture painted by interviews with Blair and the surviving children contradicts the image she projected on her Facebook page, where she wrote, loyal to my babies, and posted a picture with the message, there is no greater blessing than being called mom. The two surviving children, ages 8 and 17, had lived in the small apartment near their slain siblings, Stephen Barry, 9, and Stoney Blair, 13, whose frozen bodies were discovered Tuesday in a chest freezer near the apartment's front door, according to police and social workers. The records also show that Blair was investigated twice by State Child Protective Services workers for abusing her children and that the abuse was substantiated, despite the fact that she was allowed to retain custody. According to court records, when doctors examined the two surviving children this week, they discovered them covered in welts and scars from repeated beatings. Blair continued to receive welfare benefits after allegedly killing her children, according to the petition obtained through the State Attorney General's office, which was based on what the two surviving children told counselors. The petition requests that the father's parental rights be terminated and that the children be given to the state. Blair, 35, was arrested near her east side apartment after bailiffs arriving to evict her discover the bodies inside the freezer. Blair was charged in the 36th District Court with four counts of first-degree child abuse, a 15-year felony, and one count of first-degree child abuse in the presence of another child, a felony punishable by up to life in prison. The bail was set at $1 million. She was being held in the Wayne County Jail at the time. Blair told police that after learning Stephen was allegedly sexually assaulting a relative in August 2012, she became enraged and placed him in a boiling hot tub of water until his feet blistered. The report does not specify how he died, only that it occurred on or around August 30th. Blair then wrapped him in his favorite blanket and placed him in the freezer, according to the report. Blair told police nine months later, in May 2013, that she discovered Stoney was allegedly sexually assaulting the same relative, so over the course of the next week, Blair assaulted Stoney, starved her, serving her only a bowl of oatmeal a day and water, according to the report. Finally, they got into a physical confrontation when Blair strangled Stoney with a black shirt and suffocated her with a black garbage bag, the report states. According to the juvenile court petition, the children did not disclose sexual abuse to counselors. Stephen died on August 30, 2012, and Stoney died on May 25, 2013. Mitchell Blair tortured Stephen for approximately two weeks prior to his death by tying a belt around his neck, throwing hot water on him while in the shower, and putting a plastic bag over his head, according to the court petition, adding that when Blair discovered Stephen unresponsive, she wrapped his body in bed linen and placed him in the deep freezer. The petition deviated slightly from the explanation Blair gave Detroit police investigators for why she killed Stoney. Stoney informed her mother that she did not like her two surviving siblings, according to the petition. Mitchell Blair became enraged and strangled Stoney with a black t-shirt before strangling and suffocating her with a plastic bag. Mitchell Blair then ordered the oldest daughter to place Stoney in the deep freezer after her death. According to the petition, the surviving brother told counselors that he knew his siblings' bodies were in the freezer. 
Blair stated that whenever someone inquired as to the whereabouts of the two children, she would make up an excuse, according to the police report. She even took her other two children out of school and informed the school that she was going to homeschool her children so that no one would be suspicious about why Stephen and Stoney hadn't been to school. The young lady told counselors that her mother had burned her back with a curling iron. She had a visible cut above her left eye from her mother hitting her with a plank of wood, and her front tooth was chipped from her mother hitting her in the mouth with a curling iron. Her mother refused to provide her with medical treatment, according to the petition. Bruises were also noted on the boy's back, which were caused by his mother, according to the petition. According to the petition, doctors at Children's Hospital examined the pair and discovered numerous instances of abuse. The children disclosed being abused throughout their childhood, according to the petition. 25 scars and injuries on the boy's back, old and new, as a result of Blair's physical abuse. Numerous loop-shaped scars and injuries on the boy's body, including his back, right buttock, and right hip, according to the petition. These injuries are consistent with Blair physically abusing them with an extension cord, the petition stated. The girl has also been beaten with a cord and burned with a clothing iron and has burns on her body. According to the petition, State Child Protective Services workers made contact with Blair between September 2002 and February 2005, after allegations of abuse surfaced. According to the petition, the abuse was proven. It was unclear whether any action was taken following the discovery of the abuse. Following the Child Protective Services complaint in February 2005, Blair was referred for services through Families First, CBC Counseling Services, Eastwood Clinic, Individual and Family Counseling and Psychological Evaluation, and Work First. It is unknown if she received the services. Blair received $771 in food stamps and Medicaid through March, accepting governmental benefits for two deceased children, according to the petition. According to the petition, Alexander Dorsey, the father of Stoney and the surviving girl, said he last saw his children two years ago and that Blair barred him from her home. He talked to the surviving girl approximately seven months ago, according to the petition. When he inquired about Stoney's whereabouts, he was informed that she was in the company of her maternal great-aunt. Dorsey failed to protect his children from an unfit home environment where the children were physically abused, tortured, and murdered, according to the petition, and he owes $39,000 in back child support payments. Stephen Barry, Stevens and the surviving boy's father, stated that he last saw his children in April 2012 and that Blair barred him from seeing them. According to the petition, he owes more than $10,000 in child support for the two children, and he also failed to protect his children from an abusive environment. According to the petition, both fathers have criminal records, including convictions for drunken driving and firearm offenses. According to the police report, Blair told a neighbor what she'd done. The woman stated Blair told her she made Stephen and Stoney move away from their aunts because they were doing mean things to the relative, such as taking food from him and raping him, according to the report. Blair confessed to the woman what she had done and why. According to the report, the family's apartment was trashed, with garbage and food thrown about everywhere in every room. The apartment appeared to be nearly uninhabitable. Autopsies on the bodies, according to Wayne County Medical Examiner spokesman Ryan Bridges, have been postponed until the bodies thaw. A probable cause hearing before 36th District Judge Kenneth King has been scheduled for April 2nd. A preliminary examination was set for April 9th, 